All right, all right, all right. It is that time. The, the, the. It is that time of day, everybody. Welcome. This is where I have my editor chop out the first part of the video, but I don't have one, so you know, we just click record and it's one go, so that's just gonna stay. Um, but the time is here. The time is upon us. The time where we do the recap. Another green day. Another big green day here to start the week. Definitely grateful. Definitely a solid day. Um, you know, it wasn't a perfect day. I actually caught my biggest loser today in the morning. I also uh, caught another bad thing, which is a message from TD Ameritrade saying that I can only take 390 orders per day. If not, I'm going to be charged $2 commissions per trade, which is insane. Okay, so no thanks. I'm definitely going to keep keep my trading on the lower side. Um, you know, something that I've been doing that has been racking up my orders is scaling out. You know, with the data platforms, you get all these cool hotkeys and it's very easy to scale out. So what I've been doing is buying an initial position, adding, and then scaling out, scaling out, scaling out, scaling out. And although that is nice because I'm able to capture the bigger move, that is not good because, you know, I am churning orders. And apparently, I can't do that every over 390 trades, which is insane. You know, I had a lot of people commenting down um, that um, that message was going to come, blah, blah, blah. And, you know, I knew it was, but, you know, I didn't care. I just continued to trade. Don't tell me this hasn't been in focus all this time. Like, what's happening, man? So I didn't care, but now it's here. So, you know, now I need to start trading a little bit less. I need to start trading a little bit less, a little bit less, try, trying to trade just the best and leave the rest, which is, you know, looking at looking at it from a positive st standpoint it's going to be better for my trading i'm going to i'm going to stop over trading i'm going to stop trading nonsense size stocks i'm going to just wait for the first for that like the nice legs of momentum of strong momentum and then i'm just going to stop over trading the rest which you know it might seem like oh no this is a bad thing but um it might actually seem as um it might actually be a good thing if I'm able to retain my profits because usually when I'm when I over trade, I'm losing money anyway. So if I can, you know, stop over trading, that's gonna keep my orders low, and then you know I won't be bothered by TD again. And then on top of that, I'm I'm able to retain my profits and make more money overall in the end. That's a that's a great you know yeah that's a that's a great thing if you ask me. So um you know I got hit with that message today, which is unfortunate, but the reality is who cares. Um, you know, I'm paying free commission, so I couldn't ask for much. The only thing that makes me, you know, kind of like scared is if these guys are making money by selling my order flow to the market makers, wouldn't it be better for business for them that I trade more, right? Wouldn't it be better that if I trade more because I trade more, they sell more, more order flow and they make more money. So they should be encouraging every, every customer to trade like a maniac and just continue to over trade forever because they will make more money just like a broker that charges commission they encourage people to trade because the more you trade the more commissions you pay to the broker better for business but this is scary because if they're not making money the more i trade you know where, where are they making their money from are they just purely losing money the, the more i trade over 290 trades are they doing this to protect the trader which is obviously not the case so um you know kind of like some food for thought dead but um in any in any case too much of a rant let's get into the recap a little bit of a disclaimer trading is risky my results are not typical most traders lose money so please make sure you're trading in the simulator don't follow me don't follow anybody else by the way if you're new my name is marcel and i am mighty and the way that they these recaps work is that um the videos are going to be split into three different sections. First, I'm going to rant for a little, which I just did for four minutes. Second, I'm going to show you all the stocks I traded, at least some of them, like the most, you know, the bigger ones. And then third, I'm going to show you my live trading archives. Yes, I record my trades every single day because if, you, if you're not getting better, you get it worse. How do you get better? By studying. So every time the market closes, I go back to my recorders and see what went right, what went wrong. And what can I expect or improve for the next trading session tomorrow? Um, right, yeah. So that's that. Now let's go here into the recap. Let's let's talk about the biggest losers and the biggest winners. So the biggest loser for me was oh you know OSD, QNRX, TBLT, um, blue. This was a dumb one. 
Blue, you know, Tom Z, all of these stocks were so hard to trade because of their price. And given that there are cheaper stocks, their volatility and their range are not as big. And given that I am a scalper, we know if you're trying to jump in at high of day breaks and you get a two cent breakout, one cent breakout, it's very hard to make profits off of that. So what I did is I increased size like a maniac. I was probably buying like 10 shares, 10,000 shares on high of day breakouts. And you know, the thing broke up by one cent. Let's say it broke out by two cents on the ask. I, I hit the market sell button and I will be feeling orders, you know, on the underneath the breakout level. It was just a mess. So it was not great for quick scalping. It was better off for, for um, you know, buying support and trying to hold for the curl. So, you know, I kind of got budged on all those smaller names. And then the one I had my biggest loser on was on Tom Z. No, no, no. was on... um. BNSO. Honestly, I thought that this thing was going to go crazy. BNSO. Because, you know, it was moving a lot pre-market. You know, it had a lot of range even here in the open. And, you know, I took a big loss right here on this candle. I literally bought the high of this candle. Wanting to go long for the break of 1 for a break of 11.76. And then I got whipped on. It literally saw that the bottom of this candle... So literally, the bids dropped by, by a fraction of a second here, like at, at a low of 11. In my mind, I was just closing a small trade. You know, in my mind, I was doing something like this. But here, okay, it didn't break out. I was selling around this level. I was selling around maybe 11.57. But the candle wicks all the way to the low. Literally, by the time I was selling, I got a filled at 11.04. So I was red 670 something. On one trade, just like that, to begin the day, and I'm like, oh, great, here we go. I was so frustrated because it was kind of like a lapse of judgment. You know, it, was, it wasn't really under my control. I shouldn't have gotten that bigger of a loser, but it's just the luck of the draw that the bits dropped that hard at that exact moment. But then I was able to make it back on this move and then on the break of 12, which I got kind of aggressive. You know, if these trades wouldn't have worked, and if I wouldn't have been caught on this, I would have easily been a max loss on just this stock. So, you know, I was kind of pissed, but um, I, treated, I still traded a setup. I, I I doubled my position for the break of 12. So I bought 11.76, 1,000 shares. It breaks out. Then I doubled at 12. The moment we broke 12, I sold the entire thing. Thank goodness, because then it was like a terrible reversal, false breakout, nasty candle to the depths. Um, so that was that. But yeah, that was that. And then my biggest winner, I lag. I mean, this thing really offers some nice momentum. Having said that though, momentum was kind of choppy. So if you're red on this name, don't be too hard on yourself because momentum was definitely kind of choppy. I mean, the high day breakouts, if you're a scalper and you like scalping high day breakouts, those were kind of tricky. So you would have been better off buying dips or you would have been better off anticipating the breakouts of high of day and selling around the breakout and selling, selling around high of day or selling as soon as you get the breakout because the breakouts were like, it would break out and then it would whip down. It would double top very frequently at high of day. It would hesitate. It would have been, you, you would have find a lot of hidden sales on the level two. So the scalping wasn't as smoothly, um, which is unfortunate. But you know, I was still able to do good. Um, we had a halt somewhere in here. Hold, 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 hold. Where did this thing halt? It was around seven. Okay, so it halted up right here. You know, and I was trading along the way. All, all throughout this move, I was trading it, actively trading it. Buying the dips, selling the rips, you know, buying half and whole dollar breakouts, buying high of day breakouts, buying first candle to make a new high breakouts, stuff like that. And then on this halt, I was holding, it hot it up, and then I was holding um, 400 shares into the halt. You know, let me show you a screenshot of this. Because at this time I had stopped recording, so I don't have this on recording. But um, I still shared a, shared a screenshot on the chat room here. It was... So, here it is. So I was, this is me. So... I had some gains already and I was holding it to the halt. This thing was halted right now. It is halted and I was holding 449 shares at 667. All right, keep that in mind. This thing resumes. It, um, it resumes around seven. I immediately sell the profit 
on those 400 shares. But then the problem with that is that my order entry on the DAS platform changed to 400 shares. So then, you know, go back to one of my, maybe two videos back, in which I teach you guys how I trade the dip and rip setup. This is a very popular, strong setup that it's out of halts. So, you know, we have a strong stock that holds up, open up, opens up higher, it dips for a little bit. You buy the dip and then it rips. That's the dip and rip. You know, I saw this position. My average, my average share size changes on my order entry window to, to 449. Then the dip and rip comes. I buy the dip and rip 692. It just bounces to 721. 30 cent winner. And I look back and I look down to see that it was a small winner. Why? Because I had this share size on. You know, I was ready to go 2,000 shares on this thing. <sighs> so from that moment on, I was, man, I was trying to compensate for that lo for that loser because in my mind, it's like, what is this? 30, ce 30 cents, 2,000 shares. $600 winner. So in my mind, I was just trying to compensate. Like, oh my God, I, I was green 2,400. Oh man, I should have been green 3,000 right now. Or let's say when I crossed the $3,000 mark, oh my God, I should be green 3,600. <sighs> oh, you know, what can you do? Oh man. You know, so it's just unfortunate, but in any case, it is what it is. You know, sometimes it can work in your favor too. What if this thing would have flushed? I would have been grateful that it only took 400 shares, but oh well. I mean, I, I can't overthink it that much. If not, I'm going to get angry again. But that was that. And um, yeah, so, you know, definitely not the cleanest, strongest momentum because it took a while for this thing to open up. But it wasn't bad. It wasn't bad at all. Um, it could have done better, obviously. Um, but, you know, I'll take it. I'll take it off the table and happy with the gains. So now, live trading archives. In the meantime, take a look at this. Right, what I'll show you here is the trades on the big loser on BSNO, BNSO, and I mean, look at that. That was a very nice recovery. And then, you know, this is another hundred dollars that you have in my pocket. So just like that, well, you know, I guess, I guess this trade was kind of my fault, but just like that, I have that feeling that I should be that I was robbed of $1,200 today. This stupid loss here, and then that that dip and rip that I only took with 400 shares. Come on, man. So I want to show you that loss. That loss was really unfortunate. So look, I was going long. I'm about to go long here. This is the level two for that, for this stock. This is one minute chart. Look at the one minute chart. We're about to break the center resistance, and we're about to break this high of day pivot right here. And I think, that if we break through that, we can easily get all the way up to the hot level, 1187. So I jump in it. Well, it looks like I'm trading I like here, but I'm, I'm about to jump in this. Okay, wait. Okay, watch this. So I'm about to jump in, watch. I'm long, 11.67, and look at the bits, 65 cent spread, in a fraction of a second, I didn't even notice that, I bail out, I bail out, I bail out at 11.04, and then, and then the bits just catch up like it's nothing, and I'm like, what? Are you kidding me right now? Look at that, look at that. Look. Wait. Watch, watch, watch. Buy, spreads go to fucking nothing and then, okay. 
All right, so that was unfortunate, but then take a look at how I make it back. What some nasty traits? What's a nasty red to green on this thing? It was like down big, and I'm like, nah. I'll teach you how why, how it's done. Look, going for the exact same trade. No reservation, no hesitation. Big loss, yeah, whatever. But the setup's still here, and I'm gonna trade it. I mean, does the market care that I'm red six hundred dollars? Does that does the fact that I'm red this amount? means that the setup will no longer work, means that the setup's no longer here, means that the market is like, oh, okay, he lost already, so we can't go anymore. No, nobody cares about my PNL. Nobody cares about my money. So I know that. And I'm like, all right, big big slap in the face, but the setup is here, and I'm about to take it. Watch. Line in the sand. Long 1,000 shares. Quick in and out for the breakout. And now, if this thing is not a false breakout, I'm going to go long for another push. Watch, the high of this candle is 11.98, so now I'm thinking break of 12. I buy in 1,000 shares, we get near to 12, I double down, and then I sell the entire thing on the other side. And then I'm like, hmm, piece of shit, <laughs> give me my money back. <laughs> and then I go, oh my god, Titanic. And then I just realized the risk I, I took on that trade, me being caught on that, is a max loss day. So, you know, I, I you know, that was like kind of like a... um. Uh, a bit of a you got lucky here now, man. But don't don't tempt the market. You're not stronger than nor better than the market. I'm like, uh, I'm like, whew. Well, that was close. Um, yeah. But in any case, let's see if I can show you any other trades. And then after that, it was very slow. You know, I was able to get some green trades throughout this I like move. But um, you know, nothing much. And then I stopped recording because I thought that that was going to be like the end of the day. Oh, I have some trades here. I, th I stopped recording because I thought that that was going to be kind of it. But, um, but um, then I like kept moving and it went crazy. Okay, let's take a look at this. So level two on this is up here. Now, what are we playing with? So we just broke high of day here. We haven't broken pre-market highs yet. Pre-market highs is that red line you see right here, 497. So definitely a level I want to see break. Where the hell is my chapstick? My, my lips are dry as hell. I'll take a look at that. Be back. So what's the break of pre-market highs? Here it comes. Pre-market highs broken. In on one side, out on the other. You know, on the quick breakouts, I shouldn't be I should have been scaling out. I should be taking the entire thing off the table. Or maybe scaling out once. So on dips, scale out, don't care about the order thing. On breakouts, quick quick scalps a higher day, you scale out twice max. One, two, boom, boom, boom. And then we got the break. Oh man, this is an unfortunate trade. Oh no. Wait, is it here? We'll see. Let's see. Five with six, five is holding. Look at that bid. Should have been long there. What am I thinking? Why aren't what why aren't I long? It took too long to to buy that. Let's take a look at that again. I want to see the break of five. So let's see. Watch 95. Pre market highs is 97. If we break that, we're most likely going to rip through five. So I'm long for the pre market highs breakout. We get that. And then, you know, we rip through five. Now, can five hold? Can five hold on the bid? It looks like it's gonna hold. There it is, five held, five's holding. We did below five, but we quick, quickly reclaimed it. So I'm back in, five, and then as we pull away from five, I sell. Uh, yeah, not bad. Not bad at all. And then the break of 510, it's like, okay, if we clear through 510, then 
we are clearly holding five. And then everybody that thinks that we're not holding five are definitely going to think that we're holding five now because we are breaking through five or ten. I mean, sometimes if you if you're a short seller and, and if, if you have your stop above five, you're like, OK, sometimes these stocks break through five, they chop around and then the, and, and then they don't hold and then just flush. So it's kind of like a false break through five flush down. But once you break five, you hold and you break into five, ten. That's like even the stubborn short sales are going to be covering there. But yeah, crazy day, 3.5, well, 3.4K on the day. Absolutely insane. Um, big green day again, crazy. But I'll take it take it off the table and um, yeah, be back tomorrow. Take it easy, everybody. Hopefully you did well, hopefully you did green. Remember, if you're red, don't, don't, don't feel too bad about yourself. Don't talk yourself down. That's going to do no good. Go back to your recordings or back to your metrics and see what I could have done better. What can I improve upon for tomorrow? You know, don't compare yourself to anybody else. Don't compare yourself to me, to Ross, to RT, to no one. There's a battle of you against you. Can you do a little bit better tomorrow than you did today? Can you be less red? Can you be break even? Can you be small green? Get green and walk away. That's, that's what helped me turn the corner to get green and shut it down. So, um, you know, I'm rooting for you. Uh, keep your head down and keep keep grinding, keep working. And your odds of success are going to go super high if you do that for long enough. All right? Take it easy, fellas. Adios.